If you've been playing guitar for a while, you might start to wonder how you can make your own chord progressions. Well, in today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own chord progressions so that you can become more creative as a musician. And it all starts with keys. So a key is basically just a selection of notes that sound nice together. In Western music, we have 12 different keys, and they're all named based on the note that they start on, which is called the root note. There are 12 notes in music, so we have 12 different keys. Once you have the notes in your key, all you have to do is convert them into chords, and you know all those chords are going to sound nice together, so just playing them in different orders gives you a nice sounding chord progression. So to make chord progressions, you need to know the chords that are in your key, and to do that, we use the number system. We label the chords based on numbers through 1 to 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and those are the chords in your key. But the 7th is a diminished chord, and you're barely ever going to see that, so we're going to throw it out the window right from the beginning. So there are 6 chords you need to learn for your keys, and to do this we learn one simple pattern on your fretboard, and once you know this pattern, you can just shift it up and it'll work for every key, and it's very simple to do. So to try this out, we're going to start using G major. G major is a very common key, you'll see it in a ton of songs. It's a simple one to get started with, and you'll see how that this number system works. So first off, I'll show you the pattern of the notes. It's very simple. So we're going to start with our one chord, which is going to be based on the third fret of the sixth string. This is a G, this is your one chord. Then you move over two frets. This is an A, which is your two chord. Then we move over two more frets to B, which is your three chord. Then you're going to move up to the fifth string, or down to the fifth string, on the third fret, and that's going to be your four chord, which here is a C. An easier way to find your four chord is that it's literally just one string below your one chord. So you've got this, your four chord, then you move up two more frets, you got your five chord, which is on the fifth fret here, move up two more frets, and you've got your six chord. And that's it. So it's the exact same pattern, two frets over, on both strings. One, two, three, four, five, six. Very simple pattern to remember. So the only thing you really need to know to do this are your notes on the fifth and sixth strings. Once you know those notes, then you can figure out what the actual chord names are. So in here, we're going to have G, A, B, C, D, and E. Those are going to be our chords in the G major scale. So now you've got all the chord names in your G major scale. The only thing that you need to do now is know which ones are major and which ones are minor. This one also is a very simple pattern, and it's going to work for all your keys. So what we're going to do is chords 1, 4, and 5 are major and then two, three, and six are minor. So one, four, and five are major, two, three, six are minor. So with those two pieces of information, the notes and which ones are major and minor, we've got all the chords we need. So starting on a G, the one chord is gonna be major. Then move up, the two chord, A, is going to be minor. So that's gonna be an A minor chord. Move up two more frets, we know our third chord, or B, is also going to be a minor. Then go back to the third fret on the fifth string, and we've got our four chord, which is going to be a major. That's a C. Then the D here, the fifth chord, is also a major. And then ending on our six, we've got another minor. And then right there, just with that, we have all six chords that we're going to play in our G major key. Alright, so at this point, you probably have the general gist of it, but it's probably still a little bit confusing if this is the first time you're hearing about this stuff. So let's try this out on another example with your A major scale. Side note here, this is the most useful reason to learn your four primary bar chord shapes, your six string major and minor, and then your five string major and minor, because learning these shapes and the pattern, you can just slide this up and down on the fretboard, and then every scale becomes instantly playable because you have these same shapes that you just use in different spots. All right, so bar chords are pretty challenging, but if you are still working on your open chords like many of you watching this video will be, then you should check out my 14-day chord challenge. Its goal is to get you clear and smooth and fast chord changes. Just clean up your playing so that everything's smooth and clean so you can work on this step, and then it's going to make bar chords a lot easier once you get to them. All right, so moving on, let's try this on an A major scale. So, in the key of A major, our first note is an A. So our first chord is going to be a major, it's the one chord, and that's going to be A major. Then for our next chord, we shift down 
two frets, and the two chord is a minor, or a note is a B, so now this chord is going to be B minor. Our three chord is also minor, and two more frets over, and this one's going to be a C sharp minor. Then moving on, we go back to the fifth fret and shift down one string for our four chord, and our four is major, so we know we're going to play a major chord here, and this is going to be a D major. Shifting over two more frets, we go to our five chord. Five is also major, so right here we have an E major. Then for our final chord, once again, just two frets over, super simple pattern. The sixth chord is a minor, we know that already. And then our note here is going to be an F sharp, so we know we have F sharp minor. And just like that, you know all six chords that are going to work in your A major scale. So just to recap these ones, we're going to have A major, then B minor, then C sharp minor, then D major, then E major, and ending with our sixth chord on F sharp minor. So there's just four different chord shapes and this single six note pattern, we now instantly have all the chords that we can use in our A major scale. So hopefully you're getting the hang of this system. Feel free to re-watch this video. Again, it might take you a few times to actually fully internalize it, but once you do, it's incredibly simple to be able to find the chords in any key. So the one caveat to the system, the one thing that makes it a little bit tough, is when you get too high up on the neck here. So say we're starting on a D here. Well, these chords get very awkward and difficult to play. You're just not really gonna play them here. So what you do in this case is still use your pattern to figure out your chord names, and then you can play them on different parts of the fretboard. So starting off, we have D major, E minor, F sharp minor, G major, A major, and B minor. So those are the six chords you're gonna play but you can play them in a different spot on the fretboard. So for example, a G major here, well we know from our first example, you can also play that here. So from there, you just really pick whatever random order of those chords that you wanna play, and you're gonna have a nice sounding chord progression. Any six of them in virtually any order is gonna sound pretty nice. So let's make a chord progression here. I'm gonna go back to G major, because that's what we started with, and it's simple. And you just want to pick, to start off, just put four chords that you're going to use in any sort of order, and then it's going to make a pretty nice sounding chord progression. Now, the most important thing, the real thing that you need to remember is, for the most part, just start and end on your one chord. The root chord, that's going to be your home base, what you return to, and really it's what makes the chord progression sound complete. Anyone who's never even touched a guitar or learned a thing about music before is going to know it just sounds right when you end on that one chord. So have that one chord as your first one, and then pick random other ones, and they'll pretty much just sound good together all the time. So here's an example of just four random chords in the key, and see how it sounds pretty nice. So there's just two examples of a bunch of different chords in different orders, and you can see how that just makes a chord progression. So from there, really, it's up to you to just experiment and try around. And again, just as an example here, you see this one chord. That's really what brings it back to home, and that's the one you always want to end on. So right here. You can hear how there it doesn't sound right. It sounds like it's missing something. There's this tension here that needs to be resolved. But if we move into that one chord, we can hear how it just feels right and it comes together and it's just like, okay, that's cool. That's a good chord progression. So you can see there how just by learning the chords in your key and just playing different ones in different orders and making your own orders, you can make your own chord progressions that are gonna sound good together. All six of these chords, 
major, minor, minor, major, major, minor. You learn that six chord pattern and you can move it anywhere up and down the fretboard so you instantly have all of your chords in any key you're playing it. So try that out now. Pick four chords in your chord progression and then just play them in order. Make sure you come back to that one chord, your home bass chord, to resolve it in the end and see if you can come up with something cool. So you already know your home chord is your first chord and that's really what's gonna resolve it and make it sound like it fits. But your four and five chords give you the most tension. So if you wanna really keep your listeners on their toes and kind of build up that tension before you give them the re release that they want with that one chord, then end on your four or even particularly your five. Your five chord gives the most tension before it resolves into your first chord. You can hear even just playing these two. It just sounds nice. It sounds like it fits. Another tip is the six chord is really good to use after your one chord. They just fit really nicely together. You can see how that sounds pretty nice. I just started on the one to the six. And then I went to the four and then I ended on the five to really build up that tension before going back to our home base on our one chord. Then one final tip to get you started is to make your chord progressions interesting, just throw in an off chord here or there. So if you have your four chord progression, say we're playing our one, six, four, five, then do that a few repetitions, and then on say the fourth repetition, just throw in a three chord somewhere. It'll make it more interesting, it'll throw people off a little bit more, and it'll make your music more creative than it was before. There you go, and right there you can see how I just added in that three chord on the second repetition, just made it a little bit different, made it a little bit more interesting, but since it's still one of the chords in the key, it still sounds great. All right, so there you have it. There's a very simple way to play the chords in any scale and start making your own chord progressions. Once you learn this, it's gonna be very easy to find new chord progressions and make them, and you're gonna understand how they work together. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button, say hi in the comments, and subscribe to see my future videos. And if you're still struggling to get clean and fast chord changes, then try out my 14-day chord challenge. Link's going to be in the description below the video. It's really going to clean up your chords and get you changing chords faster. It doesn't focus on bar chords, but if you're still struggling with your open chords, then this is just really going to help your chords in general, and you'll be able to apply this to your bar chords once you get to them. Um, Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.